Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, just getting right into it today, I'm gonna be chopping up a bunch of plants. And the reason I'm doing that is because things have just kind of grown out of control. A lot of my trailing plants, a lot of plants are pushing out little offsets randomly. Um, and I mentioned this in another video, but Pudge does need dental surgery. It's nothing serious, but dental surgery is very expensive. So trying to offset that cost a little bit and I will be selling these through Lauren at some point, whether through a live sale or on her website. Um, and that just makes it easier for me to like find people who actually want these plants rather than just being kind of stuck to my local Facebook group. So if you see any of these plants that you want, um, keep an eye out for Lauren's social media. It'll again, either be on her Instagram live sale or on the website. Before I bring out the first plant, I did get a new mic. I am hoping that the sound isolation is a little bit better um, with the tapping and the sounds that happen in the background. Vince is eating lunch in the background, so I guess I'll wait to see how good this <laughs> this mic is. But anyway, um, let's just get through this roster. So uh, the first one up is my Begonia Sinbad. I have not shown this plant in ages on this channel. I honestly think the last time I showed it was like maybe not even... Maybe not even this year. Would it have been this year? Or maybe sometime in like 2021, like at the end of 2021. I still like it very much. I think it is one of like the coolest begonias ever because of just, I don't know, like the contrast between that sunken in dark venation with that really white, bumpy, like uh, fuzzy leaf and then that pink little booty hole. Um, it's beautiful. It's a really really great plant, but my gripe with this is one it flowers so much whoa, 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 whoa. And so I always have these little dingleberries that are like falling all over the place There's just dead leaves everywhere and it just will not stop producing flowers. It's like Every single time there's a freaking flower and the first time I ever got a flower on this thing I was like squealing with excitement like oh, it's so pretty and then I realized how annoying it was um, My second gripe with it is how fast it grows uh, Like I said, I haven't shown this much on this channel, but since I've had this I've probably chopped it back down to like like bare stem at least five times and I, I feel like I just chopped this down not too long ago and now it's back to being this big behemoth. So this is one that I am certainly going to propagate today. Um, hopefully we can get uh, some cuttings to root. I do find begonias to be a little bit more finicky. Um, I tend to not really callous my begonias too much because when it has like that deprivation of water, it just completely curls. So these are ones that I'm, I need to like get into like a new substrate right away. That's just been my experience. So here's the first guy up and um, it's kind of nice to see it on my channel again, but man, this thing, it just, it does not stop growing. Second one I'm going to be chopping is this Ripsalis Paradoxa Minor. Um, I have my main plants, oh, right here, this guy. So this is my big one. Um, this is one that I acquired after and I just potted it into its own pot because I didn't, I don't know, it was a little bit much together. Not that I think that there can be too much Ripsalis, but for where it is on the shelf, it's just, it took up a little bit too much space. Um, and I do find that I have the desire to have a big trailing bushy pot of Ripsalis Paradoxa more than the minor. So I was actually just going to chop a few pieces of this off to propagate, but I actually think I'm just going to propagate the entire thing and just see how much I can get from it. I know that this is not super available everywhere in the States. Um, I do get a couple messages asking me if I'll ever sell cuttings of this whenever I post it in YouTube videos. So I think it'll be cool to give people a chance to like snag some during the sale or through North Shore. Um, so this one is all gonna be hacked into bits. And I find Ripsalis to be pretty easy to root in water, but I do wanna kind of get them into their own individual containers right away. So I'll have to think about what the plan is with this one. <sighs> Seeing this on camera, oh my God. What is happening? What is happening? 
Okay, so that was very weird. Um, anyway, seeing this on camera is not making this any easier because I find that I always re, re fall in love with this plant when I'm showing it in a video or I'm taking a photo for Instagram or for my stories or something. But I have to be, I thought that was a spider mite. I was like, oh, I thought I got it under control. It was just a piece of dirt. So um, I, okay, this is my Syngonium Chia Pence. I do love this plant very much and I say it all the time. I do think it has one of the coolest sort of sultry leaves. Um, it feels really, really nice to the touch. And I, I really, I really do enjoy this plant, but here's the thing. I'm trying to be realistic with myself in like who, who I love and who I like just really like. And I'm trying to get my collection down to the, to the plants that I just, I love, that I can't live without because I wanna be able to put more energy into a fewer amount of plants that I love rather than trying to like care for all of these plants where some I'm just kinda of like feeling eh about. And this is one of them. Um, the, the, the way I came to the realization that I didn't love this plant as much as I love a lot of my other plants is that whenever a new leaf comes out i'm just like not excited about it like i'm not i don't get giddy i don't get like i don't know like i just don't feel anxious about it anxious in a good way i'm not like waiting to see if it's fully hardened off like it's just one of those plants that live in my exo and like i don't even realize how much it's growing um and i don't know i just feel like someone else would really appreciate this plant more than i would and i considered keeping a cutting but that's what happened last time. Like I had a full plant of it. I wanted to sell most of it, but I was like, man, I'm gonna have regrets. So I kept one cutting and then now here we are kind of back in the same place. And seriously, looking at it right now, I'm just like, Sherman, what the hell are you thinking? This thing is so cool. But I just, I don't really want any more filler plants, especially because this is not a plant that I can just like, shove right here you know it needs something to climb it does take up a good amount of space the internodes are so long and i don't know i think maybe if i had like a different kind of setup here where i i could put more plants that have poles like it might make more sense but this is taking up like precious exo space where another aeroid could go that like actually needs it and i just i have to be strong i know that if I don't know it comes to a point where i'm like okay i really really want this plant again i know where to find it i think my mom has one um so it's not the end of the world but uh yeah this is gonna be one of them that i chopped today i am very nervous about it though i'm not nervous but i'm a little bit um i guess unsure of how the propagation process is gonna go because I actually find this one to be kind of a tougher rooter. I have propagated cuttings before and it took so long. It took so freaking long. Um, Alice propagated a bunch to sell through North Shore too and those still haven't rooted. And it's been kind of a while I feel, so I don't know. We'll see how long I hang on to this for, but this is another one that's gonna get the chop today. First Anthurium on the chopping block is this Anthurium Brielle. If you don't remember, um, I acquired this one from Amanda. It does have dock block lineage. I used to think this was just like a silver blush or something, um, but I'll pop in a photo of what a um, bigger plant looks like. And it's actually really beautiful. Um, it has like um, an amazing emergent leaf. I do love this plant a lot. I am trying to size it up though, so I'm not actually going to be chopping the main plant, but I'm just gonna be separating this little pup that grew from it. And a lot of my Anthurium have been doing that, and I don't know if it's out of stress, but either way, it's kind of cool that I've got all these tiny little plants forming on so many of my Anthurium that I can just separate. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna be as easy as just plucking it off, or it might be. I don't know. I'm going to have to like dig up a little bit and see if I can just like easily chop this off or chop this guy off. But I did want to see if it had its own little root system because then it'll be basically ready to go for the sale. By the way, as I'm filming this, the live sale is on Wednesday, so it's not going to go up in time, unfortunately. But um, 
most of the plants that I am chopping today are not going to be for sale for a while because I want them to root. I want them to be healthy. I want to make sure they're absolutely pest free. So um, anyway, all that to say, if this one is ready, this might be one that goes up this week. But um, yeah, there's the first anthurium. There is another anthurium I will be adding to my chopping list today, but we'll get to that later. This next one is my Skindapsis Silver Cloud. This is the only Skindapsis in my collection right now. The leaves just speak to me. I love them so much. But I did mention um, before that this is probably a Skindapsis that I am constantly going to be chopping back just because I find, I honestly find trailing Skindapsis to be kind of hard to manage and to grow in a way that I'd want. I feel like you have to give it really, really optimal conditions. You have to be kind of trimming. I think you have to trim back pretty often, kind of like what I do to my micans to keep it nice and full because they tend to have really long internodes like this so unless you have a really bushy plant or like multiple yeah multiple plants kind of like cascading together where they can fill in all of the gaps um it just looks a little weird and um leggy and i'm not really into that look so i will be chopping this one back i'd much rather just have a really tiny pot that i can stick here just enjoy um so all of these long uh, these long guys I'm probably gonna be chopping off. The next one is one of many elbows I am farming in this house. This one is a much lower variegation elbow and I knew it was gonna be lower variegation but I can see um, down here you can see like it's got basically like a half moon stem and if you look at where the node falls it's actually... where are you? Hello? it actually falls like where the variegation is and i don't think you're going to be able to see it but it's down here and I'll, I'll maybe show you once we get it unpotted but i'm thinking of chopping it back here where there's a lot of variegation getting this potted separately and then selling this one as a lower variegation elbow but you can see there is variegation in the stem and oh sorry i touched the mic and i do find that with the genetics of this plant specifically sometimes it pushes out like green green super green leaves and then just like a half moon or like this beautiful beautiful leaf next one is my second to last trailing plant and this one is a philodendron rio and i honestly didn't even realize how much this had grown because it was growing in this cabinet here and i kind of just had it like pushed up against the back and it was just growing behind pots and other things and i didn't like actually see how long the vine had gotten so um this is another one that i'm not really keen on growing into like a full pot i'm not trying to get like a nice long thing i don't know i'd rather it be bushy i'd rather chop get some more auxiliary buds to um wake up like you can see up here where i chopped like there's like another growth point happening and then there's another one here so one cutting kind of turned into like four now one two three four five actually there's five separate growth points up at the base so that's kind of my goal um i don't really need this super long guy so i'll probably chop maybe up here or a little bit lower separate these into single nodes and um get them propagated but i've had some really really cool leaves on this one uh like this guy i just think the rio is so beautiful i'm still not really good at differentiating like the rio from like the silver stripe and stuff but um I got this one from someone who knows her variegated plants. She has a lot of beautiful variegated plants and it was actually a gift. Um, so yeah, it'll be nice to be able to kind of spread spread the love <laughs> around town. But yeah, that's one that's going to definitely be chopped. And then this is the last Anthurium that I'm chopping. This is my um, Five Swamp Bunny uh, from... Wow, it's so dark you can't even see it. I didn't even realize like i thought this was the older leaf and then this was the newer one but this is actually a separate plant and you can see like main plant and then it kind of grew this little pup down here and i've been wanting to get it out of this um this vessel and this substrate mostly because i'm trying to move i would say most of my anthurium to drainage holes a uh, quick tangent i've said this in the past that like most of my collection is in no drainage but it's not 
it's not like i don't see the benefit of having drainage and because i'm not super great at growing in Ethereum, um i i just feel like probably the best method of growing them for me going forward is going to be in drainage holes so that i can just kind of like flush it through and wash it out i don't really like the idea of doing that often though because then you like wash away all the good bacteria and all the myco that i'm putting in there but i think that a lot of the issues that i have with anthurium might be able to be mitigated with drainage holes now that's just like a i don't know that's just a theory that's just an idea that i had i do think another big part of it is that i'm growing them in not really ideal conditions i am trying to grow as many anthurium as i can out here um, it gets hit by the heater during the winter blasted by the ac during the summer it, yeah it's just not you know it's not greenhouse conditions and that's just kind of what i'm choosing to do with my anthurium but anyway um yeah i'm gonna separate this guy this one did have spider mites though so i'm not going to be selling this for a while but i at least want to try and get this pup separated and rooted and treated and then maybe in a couple weeks or a couple months this one will be ready to go and actually since i'm unpotting it i'm curious to see how long this stem might be because then i might even be able to get a second cutting from it okay last but certainly not least um i'm gonna be chopping my sis's quadrangularis today believe it or not um in every youtube video this one is the one that gets the most attention in terms of people asking if i'll ever have cuttings available and my goal was to try to not chop this thing because i love just like how big it's grown and how long it is i want this one to become like a huge basket but it grows so fast it grows faster than i honestly gave it credit for i chopped this recently for alice i chopped it for my mom i chopped it for my mother-in-law and it's just like every time i chop it it grows back like five times more vigorously like all of this is brand new and uh just it's been in this pot forever so i think i i'm I'm a little bit hesitant about it, but I do want to try and get as many cuttings as possible. So I do think I'm going to give it like a really, really big trim and chop off like a lot of it. And um, yeah, I know it's going to grow back. It's going to be fine. Uh, but yeah, this is one that I'm going to chop up and sell and hopefully there's still interest for it so if you're one of the people who have been asking me if i'm going to be having cuttings of this one um yeah keep your eye out for north shore tropicals by the way it's just it's easier for me to sell through north shore um there's really no other reason than that like she basically just takes it and does everything for me so it kind of works out and just like i don't know selling locally lately has not been it just hasn't been ideal i don't know i um, I really love our local group, but it's grown so much over the course of the time that I've joined um, Like when I joined there was like 600 members and now it's up to like 8,000 and I just don't really like recognize a lot of people um, There's been you know, I'm an admin in that group and there's been a lot of like sort of like sketchy People and just like bad transactions and like I just don't need I just don't need that energy right now I don't really have the time anyway to dedicate to like pickups and like messaging and all that so that's the reason it will be available through lauren and then if like people locally want it like it's basically the same thing anyway so we're gonna get started i am actually going to chop today in the kitchen um i'm filming another video in my plant room so i kind of want to keep it clean in there um but we're gonna head over to the kitchen island and we're going to put my scissors to work this is the best angle I can do. I probably shouldn't have worn white because it always like messes up the exposure. But anywho, um, I forgot to show you guys this one. So my begonia lucerna <laughs> is massive. It's a tree right now, but I'm just, I, I don't even want to touch it because I found a freaking stink bug on it. And I was just talking about stink bug eggs on, uh, what video? I, I forgot. Maybe my week of plant things um i was talking about how like stink bug eggs like just freak me out and i found an adult stink bug on it and i was just so paranoid that it had laid eggs and i have goosebumps just even thinking about it but i was like terrified to see if there were any on this plant so this is where the stink bug was on um i just put it in a ziploc bag 
carried it outside i opened it stink bug flew out and now i have this but um i want to see if i can at least propagate it it's already freaking so soft just from being chopped like 30 minutes ago so i need to get this one into something um asap but um, I'm just going to show you what I'm propagating in right now. So this is just a bunch of chopped up sphagnum moss with a little bit of soil, uh, perlite, cocoa husk, um, some leftover leca. I think there's some worm castings in here. It's basically just my soil mix with a lot of chopped up moss. And I just think that everything that I'm propping propagating today will take well to that substrate hopefully <sighs> i think i'm going to start with my rio and i will be pest treating everything today as well once they're chopped i'm probably just gonna like chuck it into my shower and just give it like a good spray what oh and what i'll be treating it with is um this it's a mixture of my peppermint cast oil soap tea tree cast oil soap and rubbing alcohol 70% rubbing alcohol. Um, I think I want to go this short. That's actually even still too long. Like I wouldn't mind going back a little bit more. And I really want to wait until these all have pushed out a new leaf before I sell it. I don't really just want to be selling like single node um, cuttings. Oh my gosh, the exposure is gonna piss me off today. Um, yeah, basically I wanna wait until a new leaf grows out of them just to make sure that, you know, the people buying it are actually getting like a plant and not just a one leaf cutting. I'm not super into that. Like I just wouldn't buy something like that nowadays. So, sorry, some of these like auxiliary buds kind of look like they're just like dried up completely, but um, I actually could see a little bit of green poking out so um where i'm cutting along this stem sorry if you're really good at propagating i just kind of treat videos sometimes like a lot of like newer people to the hobby are watching this so um where you can cut is closer to the bottom so that each leaf has more stem to work with some people like to chop right down the center but i don't find that necessary the auxiliary bud where it's going to grow out of is right here so i'm going to just chop right here and that way this leaf oh well, actually <laughs> this one has multiple leaves um now that this leaf now this leaf has a longer stem so um this is where i guess i would have chopped before so let's just leave it like that chop here and then same with this top cutting. Now it's got more stem to work with. Me and Alice were just talking about this recently, how we made a pact. I think it was probably at the end of 2021 or maybe the beginning of this year, we were, where we were talking about people who had got, oh, I forgot, I need to put this in water. I'm just gonna soak this water. <laughs> what? What? I'm just gonna soak this in water and then I'll pot it later. Yeah, we were talking about how people who have had plants like for a shorter period than us have been able to grow their plant larger than us. And of course, we all have different conditions. Some people are growing it outdoors. Some people live in like, you know, tropical conditions, whether they're in Florida or whatever. But we were like, I think the reason why we are not growing our plants as large as we could be is because we keep freaking chopping them. So yeah, we made this pack. We were like, no more chopping. We're not chopping any more plants. And then towards like like the beginning of summer, we were like, okay, so everything is growing a little bit too big. So it's kind of just trying to find like that happy medium. And right now the feeling I'm feeling is like a little bit, I don't know, like my eyes twitching a little bit at the thought of like chopping my plants because I've just been watching them grow so big over the last year. But I just, yeah, it's that constant battle, right? Of finding like the perfect medium for like how big you want your house plants to be or like how much real estate you really want it taking over. Um, so I just have to be sort of cognizant of that all the time. Like it's not a competition, like having a plant be big and lush doesn't necessarily make it like the perfect plant for me. Like I need to make sure that my collection is what I want it to be. What i want it to look like and um be something that i can manage so yeah i have to like pull off all of these freaking 
embossed labels. I find these ones to be so difficult to remove because I don't know, they're so effing sticky. And then I end up removing my nail polish instead of the, the label. Um, and I'm really only using my embosser now to label like, um, like things on my plant card or things in the kitchen. I'm not using this to label plants because my other labeler is way better for that sort of thing. And I really don't want to use these cups because then I, I'll have to give them away. But I forgot to run to the store to grab some little plastic cups for all my propagations before I filmed this video. And I don't want to leave the house. So that's what we're just going to use these. It's fine. I just find them a little bit difficult to find at the dollar stores now. It's like they were like in stock everywhere. And then all of a sudden, like, it's like, I don't know if they stopped making them or what, but they're just like never in stock. A part of me is aiming to have this video be no longer than like an hour and 15 minutes, but some like my spidey senses are telling me this is going to be another freaking two hour long video. Cause I'm like looking at, I'm looking at everyone that needs to be chopped. <laughs> And I actually chopped way more off camera and I'm glad I did because then this would have been like a six hour long video, but I did a little bit in my week of plant to do's and I did a little bit in my um, high anxiety repot. All of those are obviously up right now and I don't want to, okay, sorry. I don't want to pack it too tight because I, I want the new growth point to be able to emerge. So I'm not going to bury it too deep, but um, I am going to still bury it, but I'm just going to lightly pack it over the top so that that new growth point doesn't have any trouble finding its way out of there. Um, so anyways, yeah, I showed a little bit of what I propagated in those videos, but if you didn't catch it, I chopped um, my dark phoenix. So that one's pushing out a new leaf. I was kind of hoping that one would be ready for the live sale, but it's not. I want to wait until like at least one or two leaves come out of it. Um, I searched for corms um, in my fry deck and I did find quite a few. I think I have seven or six fry deck corms. One has already pushed out a leaf. I'm propagating scalp room. I got like eight scalp room corms. Um, I have some gloriosum silver. I do have a Gloriosum Zebra, but I'm like looking at it and I think I want to keep it. Such is life. I have a few other things, I just can't remember. Oh, I have like an Escaletto, I have a UPI, a few other things. But my whole like bottom part of my shelf now are just propagations. It's crazy, I went from like not propagating anything to just like propagating everything. And as much as it feels kind of crappy right now to be chopping my plants, I know I'm going to feel better after this. I also wanted to make room in my EXO because um, Tropicals Plants is doing another pop-up at North Shore in a couple weeks. I'm taking my mom, which is going to be exciting. It's going to be her first pop-up event slash like, I guess her getting an import straight from the source. And um, yeah, it just all kind of happened to it all happened to coincide with the time she's going to be here so i'm really excited about that but i do need to make space in my exo i need to clean out my freaking tent that's just where things like go to die i haven't even really looked in there in a while i don't even remember the last time i watered and truly probably half of those things should be propagated to be for sale because if they've been in there that long and i haven't really cared about them i probably should not have it in my collection to be honest. Okay, Rio is propagated. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Rios to sell eventually. Next one, <laughs> next one. I am not anxious to chop this at all. I want this thing pruned down. I want it tamed. She is too much. She's too much. Hopefully you guys can see. So there's like one, two, three, four, five. There's like six branches on this thing. I am going to try to do the single leaf propagation, although I am a little bit nervous because actually, you know what I'm going to do here? I'll show you. So this one here, sorry, you can't see anything. That's great. This one here kind of has like a bare stem. So I'm going to chop it all the way back down. 
this guy and then this one hmm these ones have two yellowing leaves okay i'm gonna chop this one back down too honestly i should just chop this back down to a stick at this point because i know it's gonna grow back like i i seriously am not lying when i tell you i've chopped this thing back down to a stick like multiple times and now she's she just comes back angrier and angrier um not loving not loving this situation right now um this one's looking a little sickly so i'll just chop it anyway and then i'm not <laughs> not loving this I'm not loving it so one's gotta go and i think it's gonna be maybe this one that's kind of like leaning over gone oh there's more okay um let's chop it back down here oh that feels better took a sigh of relief there she is um now i do think i don't know if i want to root trim because once the new growth comes in it's gonna have to support all those new leaves so actually i might just leave it um she looks really sad and pathetic right now but i i'm gonna set a reminder ew a fungus snap I'm going to set a reminder to show you guys what this looks like in like three months because it's probably going to be bigger than what it looked like before. <laughs> okay, so we do have a lot of cuttings. Now, if you look at like a single leaf, like this is where you want, like roots will grow from everywhere on a begonia stem, but I like to make sure that I have like one node that's submerged that I can use as like its root system and then have one leaf on it. Um, so what I'll do is do this i'll remove this leaf and then i'm gonna chop up here and this will be one propagation i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna chop or take this bottom leaf off and actually i could probably just propagate it this way because this is kind of a cute little thing so i'll leave that because i don't need like a million single leaf propagations i really really don't this stem is pretty long i don't want to do any leafless propagation so i'll do i mean this one's kind of busted looking hmm okay um how about we just i'll remove this and i'll chop this off i'm just gonna throw this away and then do that one And then I'll just keep this top cutting. I am going to remove these annoying flowers though. They're really pretty. They're really cute. I can never seem to get like the perfect photo of it to like really show how cute it is in person. But it's going to be annoying once that leaf dries up and then it's going to end up on my floor. Um, so I'm just going to do the rest um, quickly. I'm not even going to let these guys callus up. I'm going to get them into a vessel right away. I don't actually know how many cuttings I have here right now. I really hope people want some bad because I've got some bad for days. Anyway, um, something to talk about. Did I talk about this already? Discord? <laughs> um, Alice and I, uh, we launched our Discord together and it's, it hasn't even been up for like a week yet and i think we're almost at 500 people who have joined which is super exciting it's a place where people have been sharing plants showing off their greenhouses aquariums their fur children um, asking for advice plant identification things like that so it's been really cool to see everybody sort of mingle and make friends and like, you know, it's just really fun. I like kind of popping in there once in a while to sort of creep and like see what everyone's talking about. Um, my hope is that we can at least get one good love story, not like love story, but like a friendship story where like, I don't know, you guys like meet in person or something and become besties. That would seriously, I think that would make me and Alice's entire life, not, not even exaggerating. I think 
that would make us so freaking happy i'm a little bit embarrassed about selling them in these like dingy like gross cups i swear they're clean they're just all scratched up because they're acrylic it's such a weird thing to want for a plant but i just wish the sinbad grew slower like i wish it grew like five times slower it would that would be like the perfect begonia for me but begonias grow so stinking fast and this one specifically, my goodness, I just got soil everywhere, perfect. I just can't keep up with it and I never know where to put it because it just like outgrows everywhere I put it. Not only that, this is probably one of my thirstiest plants in my entire collection. Like I have to water this thing at least twice a week. There was one week it was so hot I had to water it three times in a week and the vessel isn't like it's not teeny tiny like it's a good size and it's in freaking no drainage and it got to a point where I wasn't even putting the water line where I normally do I just like filled it up didn't care <laughs> okay can you stop squeaking with the or it's like clicking um, typically I propagate begonias in water just because I feel like it really enjoys that hydration so this is the first time I'm actually attempting to propagate in um, a substrate. And I am a little bit nervous that all of them are gonna die, but obviously by, by tomorrow, if they're looking really, really bad, I might actually just uproot all of them and just like stick it into water and then transition it once it has roots. But I'm just gonna give it a try because if I can cut out the headache of having to do that later, I want to. Okay, I'm gonna switch chairs because this one keeps freaking clicking. Oh, this one's way better. I think it's because I sit in that one so often. I probably need to like adjust the screws, not adjust the screws, but tighten the screws. Anywho, um, I started watching A Crowded Room. Is it A Crowded Room or The Crowded Room? I think it's A Crowded Room with Tom Holland and Amanda Seyfried. I'm obsessed. I'm fully obsessed. Like, it's two of like my favorite people in Hollywood ever. I love Tom Holland. I have a massive, massive crush on him. And he's just, I think it's because he's such a good actor and he's just like so good at what he does. And he plays this role so well from like his American accent down to like the way his body moves with this character and the way he like stands and like his posture everything all the little like hand gestures and movements and the facial expressions he just like freaking nailed it and then of course amanda seyfried is just like gorgina george i think she's one of like my top hollywood crushes or she's been one of my top hollywood crushes since mamma mia oh my god i don't want to take this off you know what's the worst is when you're taking these off and then it just like goes under your nail Sorry if I made your butt clench. So anyway, I'm really enjoying that. I haven't finished it yet, so don't, nobody spoil anything, please. But um, I think we have maybe two more episodes to go, I think, and it's just so good. I don't know what we're gonna be starting after this. I just feel like a source of my happiness is always having like a show I'm regularly watching and I'm not super into like trash TV, not trash, reality TV. I want like an actual show. I keep hearing really good things about Yellowstone. I still haven't started it. I don't know why it's like hard for me to like wrap my mind around starting it. It just seems daunting for some reason. I, and I, I really, I don't know why, I don't know why, but I definitely want to watch that. Maybe I'll be motivated once I'm done with a crowded room. Oh my gosh, please, I hope these Sinbads don't all tank. I do think I'm gonna stick this in something a little bit higher humidity. I may, I may even stick it in my tent. I just don't know if it's gonna be too hot in there is the thing. Ideally, I would love to get this in like a, a greenhouse and I guess I could. I just don't really have anywhere to put it at the moment. I don't know, but um, I'll show you guys what the setup is gonna be after. Um, just to just give you an idea of what I've decided to do And I've now run out of vessels And I still have quite a few cuttings left. I found a few more 
Um, I want to maybe get like I'll get put like two cuttings together because I'd like to get all of this plants into the same kinds of vessels. It's a just a thing. Okay. If I can even get half of these to root, I would be very happy. I am fully like expecting some propagations to not take, some to mush up. Um, I am keeping that in mind as well. Uh, do I have a splinter? Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, besides that, let's count. Let's count how many we've got. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's a lot of Sinbad. <laughs> let's change things up a little bit. I was going to do all the ones that I need to like, like all the trailing ones I need to chop, but I need to do something different for a sec. <laughs> Um, by the way, I got these cute little mushrooms from the Secret Garden in Sacramento. If you're a local, they had it in red and yellow. Um, so I'm going to actually unpot this whole thing and see if I can get some roots on a few of them. I should have four plants or I guess three plants in here. Can you see anything, you guys? gotta tell me these things all right so here's plant number one now i was thinking of just selling them like this and just having three plants i could sell but honestly i think i'd rather try and maybe just try and get a little bit more from it if i can so like something like this i'd probably chop off right here at this knuckle propagate this guy I still want this rooted one to look really cute though. So I don't like how this one is kind of branching off this way. So I'm gonna chop there and then I'll propagate maybe these together. So this can be one plant that I'll sell. The second one is this one. It's much bigger. It's all of this. Um, I'm thinking maybe I can just take off some of the length. So I'll chop at maybe one of these knuckles. Like that. I never thought I'd be chopping this ripsalis up, to be honest with you. Um, I'll chop here. Remove that. And I actually think I'm gonna leave that one. Maybe I'll remove this. Yeah. Okay, I'll remove this here. And then I think this is a good size for a second cutting. Third one is another long one. I think I'll separate this one up here and i think i'll just separate right here too okay so here is cutting number one not cutting plant number one plant number two and plant number three i'm just going to get this repotted really quickly and then we will handle all the propagations what am I potting it in though? I'm gonna mix some of this mossy mix in there even though it's already rooted. Just so that it can retain a little bit more moisture if it's gonna be shipped. Like I mentioned, my mom and dad are coming soon. They'll be here in two weeks and they're gonna be here for a full week and I am so excited. I feel like it hasn't even been that long since I've seen my parents but I don't know, whenever they're here, it's just a good time because we get to like eat all the good food that my mom makes. We watch so many movies. It's just like a scary movie marathon, 24 hours a day. And I just think that me and Vince really need it. With like everything going on right now, it's just gonna be nice to be around them and not just have it be us. So, I'm planning to take my mom. My mom has requested she wants to go thrifting, so I'm going to take her to a few really good thrift stores around here. 
The thrifting is not good in Sacramento. I'm just going to say it. Um, they closed down one of the chains there. I don't know if you guys ever watched Lady Bird, but there was a, um, a thrifting chain called Thrift Town. And that was like a hobby when I lived there because it was so good. It was so fun to go like treasure hunting. But yeah, they closed it down and I don't know why. So now really the only ones open are like the little mom and not mom and pop but like the small business ones but of course that's not really like thrifting like because you're paying these like crazy prices but of course they're like really curating it for you and then there's like goodwill and salvation army which i find to be more expensive so in general the thrifting up here is just so much better than it is down there um so she always likes to go thrifting when she's here and then obviously i'm gonna take her to north shore once before the event so that she can go through all of lauren's plants because the day of the event she's gonna tape off everything and my mom won't be able to rummage through her stuff so um i'll take her to north shore once before the event then i'm gonna take her to the event and then i don't know if she's gonna be into this but um there's this head massage place that opened up in Richmond and like I used to get massages pretty regularly but honestly the only thing I really like having massaged is my head like my scalp my feet and like my shoulders and my neck I could do without like all the leg stuff and the arm stuff like I don't know I just I don't really enjoy that part of like full body massages but this place does a full hour of like a scalp massage plus treatment for like 60 bucks it's less than 60 bucks canadian so i was thinking of taking my mom there because like i know that she does like scalp treatment stuff um i just don't know if she'll be into it so i'm kind of i'm thinking about it i feel like my dad would enjoy it but i don't know i feel like the majority of the time while he's here he's just going to be biking all right all three are potted up now feeling good about it i am gonna water this right away just because these are about to tip the heck over because they're so heavy i was gonna chop my paradoxa today i don't know if you guys can see it behind me it's right here and it's so long it's like almost getting as long as or it's almost getting down to where like the power outlet is but I think if I have the goal of wanting to grow it really long and bushy, I should probably not chop it. And I did pick up a second Paradoxa from um, the Secret Garden in Sac, and it's already grown so much. So I think I'll eventually combine the pots. Why is this? Why are you leaking? I've only really ever propagated Ripsalis in water. And I'm kind of thinking I... I might try and do that just because I don't want to lose these and they're easy enough to pot up later where when they're rooted I can just stick them in its own pot and then by then I'll have more cups to use but here's all of the ones that I propagated so I have one two three four five I have seven propagated stems here so I'm just gonna stick this in water now and then once it's rooted I'll pot it up I had to take a break for a couple hours because my husband had a few meetings and now I am sleepy <laughs> because too much time has passed. I had lunch, uh, but I'm working now on the Skindapsis Silver Cloud. I feel like you're really high. I think that's better. So this one isn't going to be chopped too many times just because it's not like crazy spilling over, but I do kind of want to just get it under control a little bit so the one that's really bugging me is this long one right here and then this guy over here i did wrap it around this pot i don't know if you can see it i used one of these little pokey things to wrap and poke so i'm not quite sure who's connected where oh okay so this one looks like i wrapped it over the top so this one this one can definitely be chopped. Um, I think I'm gonna chop here. I was gonna chop it one more time, but I think I'm, I'm good with this. I don't wanna chop too much off. I still want to have enough to appreciate 
Got two cuttings from it immediately, not like in this leaf here, so I'm gonna just yank that one off. And then I think I'm just gonna sell it like this. I don't really feel like I need to chop it into like single nodes, especially like I'm not the greatest at rooting skin dapsis. Um, this one's really, really long. I'm just gonna shave it down a little bit. I could maybe put this into two cuttings, but hmm. Maybe I'll just keep it as two. Now I'm moving on to these black pots that I don't love because then I can't see the roots, but it's all I have at the moment. Um, so we're just gonna make do. I actually received all of my plants from Amanda in these. Come on. She really likes using these ones. Um, I'm just not as good as her at growing plants so i need i need to be able to see what's going on in there now historically i would always root skin dapsis in water because they just i don't know i have a hard time rooting these but i'm gonna try i'm gonna try this mixture and if in the next few days it starts to look a bit wilty again i will rescue it and just put anything into water that is not looking great but I want to at least give it a try i thought i was gonna have enough of this substrate like more than enough but i'm already kind of running out and i still have quite a few more to pot so i might need to make another mixture um but here is cutting number one i hope the skin dapsis rooting gods are with me because <laughs> i'm this is i it's not off to a great start it's not off to a great start i'm just not feeling i'm not feeling super confident about this rooting method but try everything once right i am i'm not looking forward to chopping this i just have to tell myself pudge needs surgery pudge needs surgery and plants grow back so um okay this one is brand new and it's still growing, so I think I'm gonna leave her alone. I've got this really long one, this really long one. Okay, this one's actually new growth. Oh, did I just break this off? I did, okay, so we're chopping this because I just snapped it off. And then I think I'm gonna go for this long boy here and chop all the way back down at the base. I really like this thick one, not quite sure I wanna get rid of that. But the thinner ones are cool too. What do I wanna do here? I still want it to look like a decent plant, so I'm not gonna completely strip it. Um, maybe I'll just trim this one down a hair and then, hold on. Uh, okay. You know what? Let's cut this little one here. I think this one... Okay, I'm gonna chop this one back down as well. And I think that's all I feel comfortable chopping at this point. Oops. The plant still looks full. I'm happy with it. Um, and I'll put it away before I get too chop happy. So here's the thing. You really only need like one of these knuckles to propagate it. So I think I'm going to propagate it in twos, like two legs at a time, maybe three if there's like any bigger ones. Like I'm going to chop this one here so that this is one cutting and then I'll chop here. It'd be nice if each of them had at least three little legs. Um, I'll leave this one since there's only four. This one already has three. This one's longer. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, this is one that I'm going to let callus up just a little bit because you can kind of see like how meaty and fleshy it is. Sorry if you don't like those adjectives, but um, 
I have noticed when propagating this that if I leave it uncalloused and I just get it into like a wet substrate right away, it does tend to get mushy. And the fastest way that I have propagated uh, Sisis is uh, perlite and water. I've never actually tried doing it in some kind of like soil or moss or anything, but I don't have any doubts that it'll, um, it'll root. These are just so vigorous. Um, I'm not sure if it's considered like invasive, but it's just, it's kind of like these um, Dioscoria discolor in that it just has the will to live. So not worried about those. I'm going to let those callus um, for the next few minutes while I work on other plants and then we'll double back to that at the end. Next one I'm going to work on is this swamp bunny. But like I said, I'm going to take out the whole thing. Right now it's in a mix of tree fern fiber and soil and pond. It's just kind of like a mishmash of everything. I haven't really seen a lot of roots on this lately, like new roots. So I am curious about what's going on. It does have a root system after all. Just wasn't very big. Lots of new healthy roots. This substrate is really wet because I just watered it yesterday. Oh, and I can see that this little growth point does have the beginning of its own little root system, which is great. And I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning, but I'm going to take this opportunity to get this one into drainage. And I'm also going to move it into a tree fern fiber soil mix instead of just tree fern fiber. New growth point is right here, and it does have its own little root system attached to it. It's not very large at all, but it's enough to get something started. Um, and since I'm not selling this one right away, just because there were spi spider mites on it recently, I'll give it a little bit of time to, to continue the rooting process. I can kind of see this one root that's like kind of attached to both the new growth point and the main plant, and I don't know who I should give it to. And if I give it to the smaller plant, it's going to be a really dicey chop. Here's what I'm going to do. I'll try and get as close as possible. I might not get the best shot, but I'm going to chop. You know what? I think I'm going to take an X-Acto knife. This is going to be sketchy. My X-Acto knife is so rusty. I don't want to use it on this plant. So I'm going to use this knife. I'm probably not going to be able to get it in the shot, you guys, but I just want to do this right. I'm going to try and sever it so that I can keep all of the roots attached to it. Oh, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Go sure me. I was trying to get this one down here. It's just it wouldn't have been possible if I was using scissors. So yeah, it's got a nice little stem, the beginning of its own root system, and now this one can sort of redirect its energy back to the main <laughs> growth point because this thing has been really, really slow. But let's get this repotted ASAP because I do not want these roots to dry out. I just need to mix a little bit of soil. I wasn't sure which size I wanted to go with. I feel like this is probably better long-term but this one fits it like almost perfectly. It's just the stem is gonna be really exposed. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the larger size. I got bitten. I have two, I think they're bites on my arms. Hold on, let me wipe off the itch cream I put on it. I don't know if you guys, oh yeah, I can see where the bite is, I think, unless I'm seeing things, but. I don't know why I'm showing this to you guys. One right here and one right here and it itches so bad. Okay, focus. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this tree fern fiber into my soil. This is what my mix looks like. Super amended, pretty chunky. About a, honestly like a 50-50 mix at this point of soil and tree fern fiber, lots of perlite, some pond mix throughout. Um, and I'm gonna be inoculating everything with great white just cause I'd rather just put it into a, um, a, a bottle and just water everything instead of sprinkle it onto the roots. 
I said that I was gonna try and chop this thing, but I am going to veto that decision because I didn't, sh well, you would have seen it if you scroll backwards <laughs> or navigate backwards. Um, there are no roots at the top, they're only at the bottom. So if I wanted to chop it one more time, I would have to reroute the top and I do not wanna do that. And honestly, at this point, I think I've chopped enough plants to cover like a good portion of the surgery if they do, in fact, all root and all sell. So I'm not too pressed on trying to cut as much as possible. Plus, Vince and I, we, we do have like an emergency fund for things like this, but I was telling him, to me, our emergency fund is for like super emergencies, like knock on wood, the apartment burns down or Vince loses his job or I get canceled or something, you know, one of those things. Um, but we will be using a little bit of that money for the surgery. But again, like if I can chop plants to help offset the cost, I just, I feel better about that. Anyway, I need to wet wash these. When you get them from the dollar store, by the way, these are from the dollar store, they were $1.25 each. Um, when you get them from the dollar store, they kind of have this like kind of musty film on it and you just, you have to wash it to make it look really clear. So I need to give this a wash because it does bother me. Oh, I thought this was $1.25. It was actually $2.50. In this economy, way cleaner after that rinse. I do see some people using these straight from the dollar store and I'm like, please rinse it. I could see it. But yeah, Alice discovered that the square pots fit pretty perfectly into them. So this is the setup I'm going to be doing um, for this. If I had LECA, my preference would be to add a little bit of LECA down at the bottom, just so that like the muddy, um, muddy, hello, soil isn't sitting in water. But honestly, I've done that setup with other ones and it's totally fine. And some of them are actually reacting really well to it. So anywho, I'm gonna actually put this one in this guy. Should I? Or maybe? I mean, it would be nice to keep an eye on the roots, but I feel like this one might be a little bit more appropriate for this root size. You know what, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just do it in here. And I'm also, I'm gonna mix a little bit of, a little bit of, I'm gonna mix a little more tree fern fiber into it just because it's not as rooted as the other one yet. Hopefully the next leaf is really cute. I can kind of see it's it's bulging a bit. I don't know, you guys probably won't be able to tell, but it's definitely perogrant, like something, something wants to poke out of it soon, but I don't know if I just delayed it by chopping it off, but I guess we'll see. So this one is done now. Um, since we're already doing this, I'm gonna go grab the other Anthurium. This one's actually been growing pretty okay in this setup, minus the fact it was like violently attacked by spider mites. I don't know if you can see the damage on there. I don't really want to uproot this just because I can see some really nice juicy roots forming. It is getting a bit heavy on the algae, but I'm not, not worried about that, so. I'm gonna lose that tag again. I just tagged my my swamp bunny last night. <laughs> I had to ask Alice to help me like ID some of my Anthurium that I didn't have tags on, so I don't wanna lose that. So the plan for this one is gonna be to just remove a little bit of the pond at the top. It would be nice to chop this one again but at the same time, I don't really want to unnecessarily chop either, just for the sake of getting propagations. But I can see this one kind of has its own little root system here. Um, hmm. Let's see. I might be able to just break it off. You know what? Let's just, um, I might actually want to move this into a pond tree fern fiber anyway so let's just let's just take it out of here get all this algae out and start over the roots look really good 
nice and healthy, not seeing anything mushy or anything. Which is a breath of fresh air with my track records and Ethereum. So the stem is pretty far down, but I can see where I can chop now. It's gonna be hard to show you where the root is that I wanna grab, but you can see it does have its own little stem and root system. I don't actually think I need to use any scissors. I'm just seeing how far down I wanna go. Actually, I think I can take the scissors to it. You just have to be very careful. One of its juicy roots are tangled in some other ones, so just gotta dig it out. Oh my gosh, there's actually so many roots. What the heck? I was not expecting all that. Something's gonna break in here, but you know what? I have enough roots for this tiny little thing anyway. Oza! Seriously, you guys, I was not expecting, I wasn't expecting all this. I really wasn't. I thought I was going to get like these two and maybe something like this, but that is amazing. And look how healthy those roots are. We love to see it. So this one's going to be ready to sell, honestly. And it's so tiny and cute. It's so perfect and little. Okay. So in terms of choppability, this stem is actually mega long. Like it goes all the way down to, oh my. Where's the bottom of this thing? Hello, where are you? Oh my gosh, it's so long. The question is like, do I want to chop it though? Like it literally goes like all the way down to here. This root system is so dense. I don't know, really know what I'm looking at here. Oh, here we go. We have an opening. Okay. Oh, wowza. All right, so this is what, this is how long, whoa. This is how long the stem is. It goes all the way down here. So I do think I can afford to chop and I can kind of see where a new growth point activated. So let's just, kind of take a gamble and see what we get. Hey, that's not too bad. Got a nice little chunky chunk down there. And I almost want to do one more. Do I? You guys, I'm so serious. It never fails me. It never fails to surprise me. The weird comments I get on this channel, for real. Some of you guys are so, I'm sorry. Most of you guys, 99% of you are like the coolest freaking people in the world. The 1% that find this channel are just, you guys really need to like, like half of the things that they say really should be something that they discuss in therapy and not on this channel. It's wild. Okay, um, I don't think I'm gonna chop anymore. I think this is enough. I think we're good. Anyway, yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> that comment that I just got. And I'm not even referring to people who are necessarily even saying anything mean about me. It's like sometimes someone will leave a comment and then someone else will reply to that person's comment like being mean to that person about something like their opinion or whatever and it's like i feel like some people just come to youtube comment sections to like pick fights with people i don't know um for me if you pick on me if you say mean things to me i'll either clap back block you, delete the comment, just whatever I'm in the mood for. But when someone's mean to someone else, to one of my subscribers on this channel, <laughs> just kidding. I know you guys can handle your own, but 
You don't need that energy here, people. We're just like, we're just fucking around and shooting the shit and playing with plants. It's really not that serious. Oh man, this thing looks like it's gonna pop a leaf soon too. Cool. Stop, it's so cute. I'm angry. I'm so angry at how cute it is. Um, now we need a cutie little pot. Well, not a cutie little pot, but we need a pot for this one with drainer tools. I didn't even realize how overcast it was and I had my AC on full blast. I was like, why are my toes frozen? I literally can't feel my toes right now. This little stem, which I could actually split into two to be honest, cause there's like one growth point here, there's another growth point here and then the main stem. But it's already kind of tiny as it is and I'm a little bit worried that if I separate it, nah. I'll be fine, I'm separating it again. She's tiny. Again, not selling these until I see some growth. I'm not trying to like sell any dicey cuttings here, okay? Anyway, you guys, just <laughs> something to talk about. Kind of a story time. I, I wonder if I can even remember the details. I should honestly wait to tell this story in like its own story time because it's freaking crazy. I seriously like uncovered this crazy scam operating ring in Sacramento. I, I uncovered it and I got them. And I was dealing with this for a year back in 20... I think it was 2020 I was dealing with this or 2019. That was like probably one of the most stressful times in my life. And the reason I'm thinking about this story is because I got my new credit card in the mail. So um, maybe I won't tell the whole story right now. I'll wait, I'll save it, but I'll just say briefly, my mom essentially got scammed. She got scammed and it was like a high level, very, organized professional scam ring you can tell that they've been doing this for decades like for a very long time and i bet you so many people have been a victim to it but i put things together i was like full on like csi detective i was like looking into people's backgrounds every person that signed a document i was like looking them up and i got them i got them good anywho Someone remind me to tell this story for real, but I want to be like tipsy when I'm telling this story because I got shit to say. Um, anywho, I fought these scammers in court for my mom, had to hire a lawyer, <laughs> didn't have money for a lawyer at the time. So I opened up this credit card to pay for this lawyer, maxed out the credit card and um, won the case, which was great. But then I was stuck with all this debt from lawyer fees i mean of course my parents helped pay for it but then like once interest accumulated and blah 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 so anywho i transferred i just recently transferred that balance to a zero percent apr for 18 months credit card um through discover card and i just got that card in the mail and so now i'm just like feeling like a sigh of relief from um you know not being on the hook for those sorry i'm not scratching my petunia i'm grabbing pawn um yeah kind of having a little bit of relief in terms of those payments for the next 18 months um obviously the goal is to get everything paid down before that um promo ends by the way the whole balance of that credit card wasn't just from this court case i ended up using it a lot to pay for things down in the states but anyway all that to say i got my new credit card very happy about it feeling like a lot of relief lately because of that not only that my school that i went to that i got my degree from the college i went to was a private school private college for-profit college beware and that school got shut down for fraud for so many different reasons and i fought those credit i fought those student loan payments and debt for over a decade. I was like, why am I on the hook for this student loan when my school got 
shut down for fraud and my student loans were a product of one of those reasons that they got shut down because it was like bad practices in terms of like taking out loans for their students giving wrong information one of them being saying that they were accredited so that you could like get your associates through that program then transfer to like a four-year college when actually those credits did not transfer at all that's a huge a huge thing to lie about okay so i fought those student loans for years eventually more people caught on there was a uh what are those called when you all go in on a lawsuit class action just took a while it was like traveling through my brain um class action lawsuit there's a class action lawsuit against them i joined it just i don't know last ditch effort because i had um tried to fight it privately through the Department of Education. They denied me multiple times. So when I saw that this class action lawsuit had come up, um, yeah, I just joined. And 10 years later, <laughs> they won it, which is crazy. I just got this random email saying that my student loans were being discharged from winning this, this court case. I was so happy that I did shed a tear. I did. This feels huge, that's what she said. This feels so massive, but whatever. So anyway, all that to say, I guess this has been the year of like getting my finances in order and like trying to be more fiscally responsible. I don't know, sometimes I don't feel like an adult. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I'll do it when I'm like old enough. <laughs> like girl, you're turning 34 in like two months. Time to, time to grow up. I still can't believe I'm turning 34 this year. It feels surreal. I remember being like, well, how old was I? Like 12 or 13, thinking, oh, I'm never gonna hit 30. Like that's gonna be so far away, it's never gonna come. Like I can still vividly remember having that thought and now here I am going into basically my mid 30s. I'm not sad about it per se, I actually, kind of like being at this age and I feel like my 30s has been way more um I don't know I've like understood myself more in my 30s than I ever have my entire life I'm not trying to like prove anything anymore which is great I'm just minding my own business staying out of drama getting through life paying my bills taking care of my family. That's really like all I really care about at this point. I feel like it was so exhausting to be in your 20s. Like being in your 20s was tiring. It was very, very tiring. That's like all I remember about my 20s is just like constantly hustling, constantly being confused, doing the dating thing, playing those stupid games with boys that were not worth it like i don't know i'm just gonna say it i think your 20s are overrated and i think like where like your really like good life begins is in your 30s i mean in a lot of ways though like my 30s has also been kind of effed up but um for reasons that i think are valid not valid but like for, for good reasons, it's kind of weird. It's so hard to like try and tell you guys something without telling you. Did I just break off this caterpillar? I can see a new leaf starting to come out. Oh well, we'll see, whatever. So um, this is in now and I'm feeling good about it. Feeling okay. Um, I'm not gonna water it just yet because I did chop it. I did chop it, right? Yeah. I topped it, so I wanna let things callous up just a little bit, but now I need to move on to, I actually only have two more left. Syngonium chia pence and then my elbow. Let's just do this elbow. I have to untangle it out of this moss because I need to grab this root out for the top cutting. And this thing has been in moss for way too long. I said I was never gonna wrestle another plant and moss yet here we are here's another random thought as i'm untangling this 
Um, so I was on TikTok, or I feel like I've been on TikTok so much in the last week. But that random egg cracking challenge, you know where you like crack it on someone's head? I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny when you do it on like a friend's head or like your partner's head or something. I don't know. I've been like just binge watching women doing it to their husbands and it's freaking hilarious. But then people started doing it to their kids. And that's where I'm like, mm, that's, that's weird. I know that I talk crap about kids all the time. I really do. But that's to me not cool. Like, I would never do that to my niece or nephew. I feel so bad. It's like a betrayal of trust. Like, I don't know, it's just really sad seeing these like kids that are so happy that like their parent or aunt or whatever wants to like bake with them and they're like talking to the camera and acting like they're making a YouTube tutorial and they're just like so gung-ho and then they get smacked on the head with an egg. And have you guys ever like, to crack an egg like by squeezing it or something like it's really hard and i would just imagine cracking an egg on a child's head would be pretty painful it's just mean don't do it doing it to your partners is funny though like if vince did that to me i would be shocked but i would find it really funny okay seriously i'm never gonna root another elbow in moss i solemnly swear to never ever do that again. Here's where we're at. I'm gonna chop here. I'm gonna separate this top from the bottom. So here's the top cutting. It has a really good root system and that's why I love making sure to redirect aerial roots into your substrate because it just makes it so much easier to do a chop like this without um, worrying about rooting. And then the bottom cutting also has a big root system. And I'm gonna be keeping this one because I wanna see if we get some nice variegation from this stem. I'm gonna wait till at least three or four leaves come out to determine whether it's gonna be kept or not. The question now is, Am I just, I think I'm just gonna put these in soil to be honest. And I can probably mix some of this moss back into it as well, just to kind of help with the transition. It's so overcast, well it's not even overcast, it's just smoky. I can see a little bit of blue in the sky, but it's just so like smoky that it looks like gloomy. But it's making me want to just lay in bed and do nothing. I'm gonna try and bury this as much as possible because I want this to go inside the substrate. And this is like pretty much all set to be put on a pole. Obviously I'm not gonna put it on a pole because it has to be shipped maybe, but whoever gets it, if someone buys it, will um, be able to get it on a pole pretty easily. I think after this propagation spree, I think I'm done propagating for the year. This one's done. There are a few air pockets, but should be fine. All good. This one I'm gonna try and squeeze into here since this one is gonna be staying with me for a while. Another one done. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm ready. I'm ready for this to be over. This is the last one that needs to be unpotted and chopped up. We still have to pot up my sissus, which is gonna be super fast. Okay, I can see some yucco roots, so I'm gonna just chop. Those off, sorry, I thought I heard, thought I heard a ghost. Not gonna lie to you, I'm not super keen on propagating something leafless at this point, especially for something that's not gonna, you know, retire me early. But anyway, um, let's just start from, <laughs> I don't know where to start. Okay, I do, no I do. 
Let's start here. This is gonna be cutting number one. Uh, cutting number two. Oh, this is painful. Cutting number, maybe I should do a two leafer for this one. Or maybe a three leaf. Oh, that looks kind of weird. Okay, let's do one leaf. And then I'll keep these two together. Have you guys seen SZA's um, music video for Snooze? We got Paragrant. I think I'm just gonna reroute it. So I'm just gonna chop all that off. Cause it's like there's some new ones, but then it's connected to a root system that gives me the absolute ick. So I just wanna see white roots. <laughs> That's what I want. I don't want the the wiry looking ones. I'm trying to think of the, oh, I didn't know this thing bleeds sap. Oh, shite. Look, it's all over the place. Oh, no. Crap. Um, how are we feeling about this one? I feel pretty okay about this root system, actually. Okay, um, I'm sticky. Oh. I really don't want to sacrifice these pots, but it's either these or old McDonald's cups, and I am not selling <laughs> plants in old McDonald's cups. So um, I am gonna pot these right away just because it's bleeding sap, but I'm not gonna water it just yet. Whoa. Oh, it's so sticky. You guys, I feel like I've been filming for six hours. Have we been here all day? How's everyone? How's everyone doing? If I manage to keep this video under an hour and a half, just know that I probably shaved off like two hours of footage. No lie. In my last week of plant to do's, I think in total I had eight hours, <laughs> eight hours of footage and I shaved it down to three. I hope that the new growth points can find its way up. I'm sure it'll be fine, but I'm burying them kind of deep because they're so top heavy, but I don't have a choice. Either that or the whole thing topples over. If I end up keeping one of these cuttings, I don't want to hear a damn word from you guys, okay? It's a personal decision. Um, oh gosh. Okay, so now I just need to do the Sissus and this Begonia, which has not perked up yet. I, I think because it was a new leaf. I actually just might leave it in water. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it. I think I can do the Sissus and these little guys. So anyway, as I'm potting, I guess we'll like wrap things up. Okay, I'll move this way. Which way do I want to move? So I'm just gonna insert some footage, I think, showing you guys. I'll put it in here. I'm just gonna insert some footage showing you guys kind of the setup of what I do with it. My thought is that I'm gonna just fill up that second shelf in my plant room. I'm gonna try to enclose the things that I feel need to be enclosed. And then uh, the rest are just gonna have to fend for themselves. If you guys noticed, um, most of my props right now are in the two cup method containers. And it's essentially just building like a tiny little greenhouse for each of them. But I don't have enough containers to do that with, nor is it very easy to do that with some of the plants that I potted today, like the Sinbads. So I am gonna have to really keep a close eye on the watering, um, which is one reason I haven't been propagating a lot. I mean, not because I want to grow my plants really big. I mean, that is a reason, but also because of the fact that taking care of propagations is, it can be really uh, demanding and um, requires a lot of attention. And if you just 
like forget to water one week or let something dry out once, it's toast, depending on the plant. Begonia, for sure, not very forgiving at all. Anyway, guys, um, I am just about done potting up my last thing here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it maybe motivated you to chop some plants if that's something that's been on your mind lately but you just needed a push or you were scared to do it. Even if you're not planning on selling any plants, um, now is a good time to get those last minute summer trades in. I feel like everybody has been trading like crazy. So um, yeah, get those trades in. But anywho, I'm gonna go. I made a massive mess here in the kitchen. It's almost dark. What time is it? It's like five o'clock and it's like dark outside. Um, so I'm gonna go, but again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. Um, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, appreciate you guys all so much. Don't forget to join the discord. Come say hi. I pop in every once in a while um, It's a good time. So uh, that one is linked in the description <laughs> I'll link it in the description, but it's also linked on my like profile page on YouTube um, but yeah See you in the next one <laughs>